Working with vectors, we discussed how we can add and subtract vectors together. We did a multiplication with vectors called scalar multiplication, where we multiplied a constant or a scalar by a vector. But we haven't talked about how we can multiply two vectors together. There's actually two different ways to multiply vectors together. And so we specify the difference by not calling it multiplication, but we call them a dot product and a cross product. The difference is one gives us a scalar as a product, and one gives us a vector as a product. And they both have different uses depending on what we're trying to accomplish. In this video, we're going to look at the dot product as we answer the question, how do we multiply vectors? to get a scalar or a constant. In other words, when we multiply these vectors together using the dot product, the answer is going to be a scalar, not a vector. So let's define this dot product. Let's say we've got a vector u. And that vector u is x1, y1, z1. And there's another vector v that's going to be our second vector. So we'll call it x2, y2, z2 as its components. The way we define the product u dot v, the dot product, is we're going to multiply the components together and add the products. So we'll take the x coordinates and multiply them together, x1, x2, plus then we take the y components and multiply them together, y1 times y2, plus and then we take the z components and multiply them together, z1 times z2. And when we add those together, we'll get some scalar. So this is just a new operation we really just need to do a little bit of practice with to learn. And then we'll talk about how it's useful to us when talking about vectors. So for an example here, we're going to do vector u is equal to 2, 9, negative 1. And vector v is equal to negative 3, 1, negative 4. And we're going to calculate u dot v. Well, to do u dot v, we're just going to multiply the common components together. We take the x's. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Then we take the y's. 9 times 1 is a positive 9. And then we take the z's. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. And when we add those together, negative 6 plus 9 plus 4, we get 7. So our dot product of u and v is equal to 7. Let's try one more example. Let's say vector u is equal to 3i plus 5j plus 2k. And vector v is equal to negative i plus 3k. If we want the dot product u dot v, we'll start by multiplying the i components together. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. The j components together, 5 times, and you notice there's no j component on v. Since there's no j component, that really means there's 0 j's. So 5 times 0 is plus 0. And finally, on the k's, 2 times 3 is a positive 6. And so when we add those together, we end up with 3. And that's the dot product. It's a very simple, straightforward multiplication of vectors where we multiply the components together and add the individual products. What is this useful for, though? Well, one common use of the dot product 
is the dot product can be used to tell us the angle between two vectors. We have an important formula that says that the cosine of the angle between the vectors is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And this is going to be an important formula for us to know. You'll probably have it memorized by the time you finish the homework assignment, because we use it a lot as we try and find the angle between two vectors. So let's do some examples where we find the angle between two vectors. Let's start with the vector a is equal to 1, 2, 0. And b is the vector 2, 4, 1. I like to find the individual pieces of the formula before I plug them in. It just makes it a little more straightforward. So let's find the numerator first, the a dot b, which is going to be 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2 times 4 is 8, plus 0 times 1 is 0. So a dot b is 10. Next, we need the magnitude of both vectors. So the magnitude of a is the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared, or the square root of 5. We also need to know the magnitude of vector b. Vector b is the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 21. Now we put it all together and know that the cosine of the angle between the vectors is the dot product 10 divided by the product of the magnitudes. And we multiply square roots, we multiply underneath 5 times 21. Now we just go to our calculator to figure out what the cosine inverse of that fraction is. And we can type it in just like it is. Cosine inverse of 10 divided by the square root of 5 times 21. Make sure we close the parentheses on the cosine inverse. And this tells us that the angle is about 0.22 radians. So theta is equal to 0.22 radians. Let's do one more example. Finding the angle between, let's say a is equal to i minus 2j plus k, and b is the vector i plus j minus 2k. Again, I'm going to find the pieces of the formula first, and then we'll go to the formula. First, we need to know what a dot b is. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Gives us a total of negative 3 for the dot product. Then we need the magnitudes. The magnitude of a is the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 1 or the square root of 6. The magnitude of b is the square root of 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is also the square root of 6. And so when we put that all together, we know the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product, negative 3, over the square root of 6 times 6 which is actually 36. And the square root of 36 is 6, which means this reduces to negative 1 half. 
Well, here we don't have to go to the calculator because negative 1 half is one of our key points on the unit circle. The x coordinate is negative 1 half at the point 2 pi over 3. So theta must equal 2 pi over 3. This is our angle between the vectors. As we're discussing the angle between vectors, one important relationship comes out of this. We'll go ahead and call this number 3. It is this concept of what are called orthogonal vectors. And orthogonal is just a big fancy word that means perpendicular or a right angles. Basically, two vectors that meet at a right angle. And to set this up, let's say if u dot v turned out to be 0, then as we're trying to find the angle between the vectors, we would say the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. But 0 divided by anything is 0. And we know from our unit circle that the x coordinate is 0 at pi over 2. So therefore, the angle theta is pi over 2. We have a right angle formed between these two vectors. Those vectors are orthogonal if u dot v is equal to 0. The vectors are orthogonal. So that can save us a little bit of work if we end up with orthogonal vectors. If I asked you to find the angle between vector p, which is at 1, 0, 5, and vector q, which is at 10, 3, negative 2, we would start going through that same process that we had before. We would first find the dot product, p dot q. And then we'd find the magnitudes and set up our formula. But look what happens when we do p dot q. We end up with 10 plus 0 minus 10 to give us a dot product of 0. As soon as I see that dot product is 0, I know the vectors are orthogonal. which means the angle between them has to be pi over 2. And I can stop there. Saves us a little bit of time. In fact, we can even go a step further. And we can find components to make vectors orthogonal. We can find maybe an x so that vector p equal to 2, 8, negative 1 and vector q equal to some missing component x, negative 1, 2, such that those two vectors are orthogonal. Well, if I want these vectors to be orthogonal, p dot q has to equal 0. So let's calculate p dot q. Multiplying the x components, we get 2x. The y components, negative 8. The z components, negative 2. And to be orthogonal, that has to equal 0. Well, this is a real simple algebra equation. By adding 10 to both sides and dividing by 2, we find out if that first coordinate is a 5, p and q will be orthogonal vectors. 
So in this video, we've taken a quick look at the dot product. The dot product is a way to multiply two vectors together to end up with a scalar. And that dot product is commonly used to find the angle between two vectors. Go ahead and take a look at the homework assignment to practice these. And then in our next video, we'll take a look at how we can multiply vectors together to get a vector. We'll see you in class.